What is going on, guys and gals? Brooklyn Bound the Raid Scientist here with another Destiny 2 Raid Guide. Today, we're going to head atop the Leviathan and save the Spire of Stars. This is a fairly mechanic-heavy raid, but it is very well put together and very fun. I find it one of the more enjoyable raids in the game. In this video, I'm going to walk you through each encounter and explain all the details so you can go ahead and give it a try yourself. Let's jump right into it. The Spire of Stars starts in the Celestial Garden. Callus has called you here one more time to help him push back the Red Legion once and for all. The first encounter is basically a game of hot potato while maintaining control of ads at all times. All team members want to have roaming supers here and weapon setups to handle large numbers of enemies. There is no boss in this encounter, so you don't need DPS weapons. The most difficult enemies will be solar shielded centurions, gladiators, and a few colossus. In this encounter, you're going to learn the main mechanic that you'll encounter through the entire raid, and that is using the orbs, passing them back and forth, and charging them with greed. The orb functions as any other orb you've encountered in Destiny. You can pass it back and forth by aiming down sights and using the shoot button to throw. To catch it, simply be facing the ball when it comes to you. You'll automatically catch it if you're close enough. If it hits your side or your back, it will bounce off you. The ball, by itself, is useless. You can hold it forever and nothing will happen. Throughout the raid, you'll see piles of steam, like the one atop of this pillar, around. This steam, or is what I call it, will charge the ball if you stand in it while holding the ball. When the ball is charged, it will stack with greed, which will kill whoever's holding it if they get to 11 stacks, meaning that once the ball is charged, you can't hang on to it very long before you have to get rid of it. And once you get rid of it, your greed will slowly go down back to zero. Like I said, for each encounter in this raid, a ball is useless if it does not have any greed. And one final note, if you step into the steam without the ball in your hand, you will get a debuff called Engulfed. This will kill you in about 12 or 13 seconds unless you get a ball to absorb it. So you can only jump in the mist with the ball in your hand. Get used to all of these points I just explained as you will do with them in the entire raid. For the first encounter, designate four people to be responsible for the four pillars around the arena, and two people to 100% focus on clearing ads. We'll number the pillars 1, 2, 3, and 4, starting at the top left and going clockwise. The goal in this encounter is to keep these four pillars suspended in the air. The only way to raise them is to stand on them, and the only way to stand on them is to have a ball, because at the top of the pillar is the steam. So, you're basically playing a game of catch. Player one will get the ball, jump on their pillar, and raise it up as high as it will go. Then, they'll throw the ball to person number two, so they can catch it, get on their pillar, and raise their pillar up. And then throw it to player three, and so on. As soon as the player throwing the ball gets rid of it, they have to get off their plate. And when they do, it will slowly lower back to the ground. If it gets too low for too long, their fire will turn red and the raid will wipe. After the four pillars have been raised for long enough, the shield protecting the giant purple pot that is in the middle of the arena will lower. You'll see a command on screen when it does. And when this happens, someone can throw the charged ball into the pot. I recommend only persons on plate one or four throw it into the pot because if they miss the pot and it goes over, it'll just go across to the other person. However, if person number two or person number three misses, it could go over and into the water, meaning you will lose the ball and likely have to wipe. Here, in this section, I will show you the different spots we use to receive the ball from. When person one is on the tower, person two will stand here. That way, person one can throw the ball directly from their plate. When person two is throwing to person three, person three should stand on the ground facing person two by their pillar and wait 
for the ball. And person four should stand here in the aisle facing person three so they can throw it from their plate. Finally, person four should face person one who is all the way across the map over the giant purple pot and then aim up in the air really high and hail Mary the ball over the pot. If done right, the ball will hit the wall on the other side and roll down right in front of person one and they can grab it and jump on their pillar. Once the ball has been successfully thrown into the pot, a new ball will spawn from the dispenser in the back of the room and you'll start the process all over again. You have to do this three times, plus the one at the beginning to start the encounter, for a total of four balls into the middle pot. While all the throwing and catching is going on, ads are going to be constantly spawning from the doors around the map and they will progressively get harder. They will start with dogs and legionaries, and then gladiators and colossus will start spawning. The two ad clears will keep them down as much as possible, and when the pillar players aren't on their plate and getting ready for the ball, they will also help. One person will stay near the spawn between plates two and three to clear ads, and one person will go up to the top near the ball dispenser and clear ads. Make sure you rotate supers, pick each other's orbs up, and feel free to use heavy on the yellow bars. After you've cleared four charged orbs in the middle, you have finished this encounter, can collect your loot, and move on. The next area is a giant jumping encounter with a little twist. You have to navigate platforms and rotating fans all the way to the end. However, there are three secret chests in this area. The first one, I'll explain, is the most labor intensive. It requires carrying a charged orb all the way across the entire jumping puzzle to the end and throwing it in a target to open a locked door. If you head to the right, right when you enter the open area, you can shoot a panel on the wall and release an orb. You have to toss this ball back and forth across the entire arena, but thankfully there are three checkpoints along the way where you can throw the ball to target. Then, if you mess up, you can start from the checkpoint instead of going all the way back to the beginning. The same rules from the first encounter still apply. You can only hold the ball until you get to 11 greed. And, the ball without being charged in the greed steam is useless. It is easier to do long throws and get people into position first before starting the throwing sequence, but it also requires that you know where to stand. Otherwise, you can just move as one unit tossing the ball back and forth, jumping along the fans and up onto the pillars until you reach the checkpoint rooms. Toss the ball up at the targets and pull the lever in the room to set the checkpoint and raise the platforms to the next section. Keep doing this until you reach the end area. Go left and throw the ball at the last target opening the door with the hidden chest. Another chest in this area is just after the second checkpoint. Instead of jumping all the way down to the right towards the next jumping section, instead follow the fans like on screen up to a chest. The last chest is at the end. When you go right to the right, instead of left towards the ball secret chest, there will be a big door that opens, and inside there is a large pillar with four switches on it. If all four switches are meleeed at the same time, it will spawn the final chest up top. If done correctly, it will open the pillar and pull you up so you can only get this one time. Once you raise up the spire, you will enter the Celestial Observatory. You'll be greeted by Val Kuor, who is commanding this attack on the Leviathan. He'll run off and leave you with a slew of ships that you can see through the window that you'll need to destroy. Once again, 
you'll want roaming supers for this encounter. A good ranged weapon for shooting adds while you're on plates. A decent shotgun or fusion is probably pretty helpful too. Heavy? Once again, just choose whatever you want to clear adds. Heavy machine guns, grenade launchers, whatever you want. The hardest enemy you'll have to kill is gladiators and colossus. There is no boss in this encounter, so once again, you won't have to DPS and strategize to do that. If you look out the windows in front, you'll see a handful of Red Legion ships that have congregated outside the Leviathan. In this encounter, you need to destroy those three ships. When you enter the room, you'll notice a lot of different plates and doors that'll all cover individually. First, you'll need to assign four people to the large orange plates near the back of the room. We number these plates one through four from left to right if you're facing outside. When all four are stood on at the same time, they will activate the orange spire in the middle of the room that's up on the stage. This spire is the teleporter to outside where the ships are located. So anytime you either need to go up to scout the ships or destroy them, you'll need to send someone up by activating all four plates. The other two people that aren't assigned a plate will be the floaters. Their job will be to cover any of the four plates if someone assigned to one of them has to go up through the spire. To start this encounter, clear the ads and then have four people stand on all four plates. When this happens, the spire will activate and three people will randomly be chosen and given a buff on their screen called Superior Retainer. This buff allows you to travel through the spire into outer space. If you don't have the retainer buff and you go into the orange spire, you will die. So, everyone with the retainer buff will call out if they have it, and then you will need to send one of those three people up through the spire to start it. It's best to send one of the floaters up if they get the buff, because they don't have a plate responsibility. Ads will start spawning all over the stage from the doors in the red and blue rooms in the back. When the person who went up into outer space gets outside, they will see three ships, and one of them will be marked with a big circle around it and a symbol above it. This process is what I call scouting, because the person is identifying which of the three ships needs to be destroyed and what symbol is associated with it. The next phase, you'll need to activate the weapon of the Leviathan to destroy the ship. To do this, a single ball will launch onto one of the four plates. This ball needs to be charged with the engulfment steam, which is located at the top of the stage. Once the person has charged the ball, they need to take it to one of the three doors located under the stage. The door they need to go to corresponds to the symbol that's above the ship during scouting. The three symbols are identified not by the funky looking symbol on the inside, but by the shape on the outside or the outline. As shown on screen, the door on the left has a symbol with a square around it, so square is left. The symbol in the middle has a circle around it, so circle is middle, and the symbol on the right has a triangular shape around it, so triangle is right. So when the scouter is up in space, they'll call square, circle, or triangle. And this tells the person back inside who gets the ball which door they need to activate. The remaining five people need to go down to the plates in front of the doors, with the symbols on them, and stand on them all at the same time. Doing so will open all three doors, and the person with the ball will throw it into the door, or the target, that was called out. Doing so correctly will arm the weapon system of the Leviathan and you will see a tooltip on screen like missile barrage armed or something like that. Finally, now the weapon systems are armed. You need to go up and destroy the ship that was targeted. So, everyone will head back to their orange plates in the back of the room to activate the spire. And the same person who went up and scouted will need to get the next ball that's launched out onto one of those plates. Then, everyone will jump on their plates and activate the spire, and the person with the ball will charge it in the steam, and then go up in the spire, and finally throw the ball at the marked ship. Note, there will be some colossus that come out during this part, so make sure that you dispatch them quickly. Once the ship is destroyed, you'll get about 60 seconds of ad clearing, 
before the whole process repeats again. You have to do this a total of three times to finish the encounter. Keep up with the ads and you shouldn't have too much trouble. Here's a quick summary of the entire encounter. It's basically three phases. You first start by calling out retainer, go up and scout out the ship that needs to be destroyed. Using that symbol, you go down and use a ball to throw it into the doors. You throw the ball into the door that matches the symbol. Then you go back and send one last person up into space to destroy the ship. Clear ads and repeat. Also, here is a summary of the seven plates, the four orange spire plates, and the three door plates. You want to make sure you fully understand the mechanics here, because in the final boss, you're going to be repeating many of these procedures. Go ahead and collect your chest and get ready for the final boss encounter. Since I'm making this video with some major subclass changes from when it actually launched, I'll go ahead and cover setups based on what's current. You'll want one Titan with Bubble, aka Weapons of Light, and one Warlock to have Well of Radiance with Luna Faction Boots. Everyone else should be on roaming supers like Bottom Tree Striker, Arc Strider, etc. Weapon-wise, there are a lot of different strats you can use for DPS now. Spike grenade launchers coupled with tractor cannon or divinity are great. Snipers like Izanagi's Burden or Whisper can all do major damage with a divinity as well. But if you don't have divinity, these weapons will still do massive damage to the boss, but things like rockets and grenade launchers will also be easier to use um, because the boss does move around a lot and it's hard to hit his crit spot. Also, you want to make sure you still have that one ranged weapon like a pulse rifle or a scout rifle because it is helpful to kill the adds while you're standing on your plate. So, this encounter has seven phases. I'll cover each one individually to help keep the fight organized. First, phase one is ad clearing. When you start the fight, you want to split the teams into two people left, two people in the middle, and two people on the right. Clear all the ads in the blue rooms and the red rooms on the left and right respectively, making sure you take note of the orange bar centurions that come out and kill them quickly. You have about 45 seconds to do this. After that, you need to move to the second stage of the fight, which I call the pooping stage. If you look at the boss, he'll drop a squat and then engulf everyone in the room. The engulfment will kill you if you do not get a ball to absorb it within the 13 seconds. So when he engulfs everyone, a ball will come out and you have to pass the ball among all the people in the team quickly to remove the debuff. The ball is launched to one of the plates, so once it comes out, you can get in line and pass it back and forth. Then, once everyone has touched it, the last person needs to throw it at the boss. If you miss, you have to do this again. This sends you into phase three, which is the gladiator drop pod phase, and the point at which three people are assigned the superior retainer buff again, just like the first encounter. Get off your plate, as drop pods will come down with gladiators, so dispatch them quickly. In addition, call out who has retainer, and decide who is going up to scout ships, as well as assign a second retain person to destroy a ship later. Because you'll soon find out that you have two ships to destroy at a time in this fight instead of just one like the last encounter. Once the gladiators are down and the assignments are made, get on your plates and send one person up to scout. This moves us into Phase 4. Phase 4 is the Balls and Doors phase. It's just like the first encounter, except instead of one ship with one symbol and one ball, there are now two ships marked with two balls to come out and, you guessed, two doors that have to be charged. The person scouting will call the two symbols they see, a square, circle, or triangle, and the people who receive the balls will go charge them in the steam and thank them to the two doors with the corresponding symbols. Meanwhile, everyone else will go down to the door plates and stand on them to open the doors for the ball throwers. Make sure you see the two tool tips to activate the weapons this time for both. Once done correctly, everyone will head back to their large orange plates again, triggering phase five, which is the ship destroying phase. Two people who are assigned to go up in the spire with superior retainer will get the balls that come out. Then charge them in the steam and everyone will jump on their orange plates activating the spire. And those two players will go up with their charged balls in hand and throw them at the two marked ships. Make sure you communicate which you are throwing before you go so you don't accidentally throw the ball at the same ship. 
You have to destroy both ships to move on to next phase, which is phase six. Phase six is the juggle phase, and it's the last step before DPS. In the juggle phase, three balls will come out one at a time. All three balls need to be charged and then thrown up at Callus, who will raise up in the air after about 60 seconds. Since this 60 seconds takes a little while, some of the balls will be needed to juggle back and forth between players to keep them from dying with greed. The best way I've found to do this is to have three people go up towards the glass on the left and two people to go up on the glass towards the right. And then one person will kind of play a quarterback in a sense. When the first ball comes out, the quarterback will get it, run up to the stage and charge it, and then pass it to one of the three people on the left side. Those three people will juggle this ball back and forth, making sure to hand it off to the next person when they are at 10 greed. Because remember, you die if you reach 11 greed. Then the second ball comes out, and the quarterback again will get it and charge it, and then toss it to one of the two players on the right side by the window for them to juggle it between each other, just as the left side is doing. Finally, the third ball will come out. The quarterback will again grab it, charge it, and then this time they will keep it to themselves, as Callus will start to raise up in the air very shortly after. Once Callus has raised all the way up in the air, he will throw his hand up and it will glow purple. At this point, the three people holding the three charged balls will all throw them at Callus and he'll absorb them. If he absorbs all three, he will drop back down to the ground and break the shield of the boss, allowing you to finally damage him, which is phase seven. DPS can be done about 300 different ways. My preference is to just set up a well of radiance near the glass on one side with a weapons of light bubble, and everyone stands in the well and unloads on him. Use divinity, tractor cannon, melting point, or whatever you want to debuff him for extra damage. He will launch out heat-seeking missiles at you, so be careful if you're outside the well. They pretty much can one-shot you. If you don't finish him off in one phase, you'll have to repeat everything all over again to get to a second DPS phase. At the current stage of the game, in the age of this raid, one-phasing him is pretty common. Regardless of how many phases it takes you, once his health has been depleted all the way, he will do a final stand, which is common among many Destiny bosses. He will launch out six balls onto the floor by the door plates, and these balls need to be picked up and thrown at him. You need at least four balls to hit him to finish him off, so take your time and aim so you don't miss. If done correctly, the boss will finally fall and you can collect your chest and your emblem. Congratulations, you have completed the Spire of Stars. That's all I got, Guardians. Best of luck in getting this done. If you found this video helpful, please, please, please hit that thumbs up or hit the sub button to get more of my Destiny Raid videos. Until next time. I'm going to go ahead and throw a quick summary up here on the screen for those of you who want to review the seven different phases of the final boss encounter. Thanks again.